Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module six, lesson two. And in this lesson, students are gonna be, again, doing some uh, modeling with tape diagrams. They're gonna be modeling a bunch of word problems, so students are gonna be reading a whole lot. Uh, and the idea is, parents and teachers, we're gonna be helping our students go through a very systemic, systematic process for how to uh, read word problems and how to model them using tape diagrams. It's going to help address that old students can't do word problems issue. Uh, specifically, we're going to be focusing on comparing with bigger and smaller unknown problems. So let's get started. So just as a visual, the, the two categories of the 12 kinds of addition and subtraction problems that we're going to be doing, uh, we are going to be focusing on down here at the comparing with bigger unknowns and smaller unknowns. Now the neat thing is, um, if you can even, so if we're going to be focusing on comparing with bigger unknowns, you can write the problem using the word more, but you can also write the word problem using the word fewer. So this is a big heads up. Teachers, if you are the kind of person who teaches your kids to be looking for key words, you can't. You, we really have to give up that idea of teaching key words because the word more doesn't always mean add, and the word fewer does not always mean subtract. It, you know, uh, students might use the word fewer to solve that problem using addition, or they might see a word problem that has the word more, but solve it using subtraction. So um, anyway, th this, these are the two kinds of problems we're gonna be solving, and we're not really gonna be using key words. We're gonna be reading the question for understanding, we're gonna be modeling it, and then using whatever mathematics is necessary, whether it's addition or subtraction, to solve the problem, regardless of the words that we see in the problem. So remember, <clears throat> we're going to read the, read the question, write your answer statement with a blank, and then model. So we're going to begin by saying, OK, Kim went to 15 baseball games this summer. Julio went to 10 baseball games. How many more games did Kim go to than Ju Julio? So Kim, Kim went to blank more games. All right. So there is my number or answer statement with <clears throat> with a blank. Now we're going to go back. We're going to read the question and we're going to identify two characters in our story. We've got Kim and we've got Julio, and we're going to give them both the exact same length number t uh, tape diagram. All right, And then <clears throat> we're going to go back and read it again, and this time we're going to modify the tape diagrams as necessary. So we always begin by giving our characters the same tape diagram, and that's deliberate. So Kim went to 15 baseball games this summer. We don't need to change this at all we know that she went to 15 games. So we're going to label this as 15. Then it says Julio went to 10 baseball games. So is 10 bigger or smaller than 15? Well, it's smaller. So that means I, gotta, I need to chop off some of Julio's tape diagram. So it's a shorter tape diagram, so that part is not really there. We did that deliberately, and we're going to label this as 10. Uh, we, did, we, do, we begin with the uh, tape diagrams being the same deliberately because the act of modifying the tape diagram helps students understand the problem. Oh, Julio has a smaller number of baseball games, so his tape is going to be shorter than Kim's. Now the question says, how many more games did Kim go to than Julio? So the idea is, we want to know what is this distance right here? What is the length of that tape diagram? So it, the act of having to modify our tape diagram is helps us indicate where the answer is in this case. It's not always going to be the, the story, but we see 
that the answer is five. So parents and teachers, I'm going to be focusing on the tapes. Your job is to help students walk through the whole process. Uh, step one, write your answer statement with a blank. Step two, identify your characters and draw the same length tape diagrams. And then step three, modify your tape diagrams and fill in the information as you read the question. And then step four, get your answer. So it's a four-step process. So Willie saw seven reptiles at the zoo. Emmy saw four more reptiles at the zoo than Willie. How many reptiles did Emmy see at the zoo? So our sentence is Emmy saw blank reptiles at the zoo. At the zoo. All right. So parents and teachers, that is the key thing right here. Can't, oops, whoa. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. The question is, you know, can students even identify the answer statement with a blank right here? Do they even understand the question, let alone can they get the number as the answer? So who are our characters? Well, our characters are Willie and Emmy, and we are going to give them the exact same length tape diagram. That's step two. Uh, step three is let's start modifying these tapes based on the problem. So Willie saw seven reptiles. Well, there you go. We are, we now know, let's make it green because that's fun, okay, because they're reptiles. That length is seven. Emmy saw four more reptiles. That means we need to extend her tape diagram a little bit. And that little piece right here is four. So then the question is, well, how many reptiles did Emmy see? So we want to know her total right here, her total. Well, that means we need to add this length plus this length. Well, we know this length. This length is also 7 because, remember, we started off by giving them both the exact same length. So Emmy is 7 plus 4, which is 11. So Emmy saw 11 reptiles at the zoo. And our last problem, Rose. Rose found 16 seashells. Uh, Lee found 6 fewer seashells. How many seashells did Lee find? So Lee found blank seashells. There we go. There's our answer statement. And we see that our two characters are Rose and Lee, and we're going to give them both the exact same tape diagram length. <laughs> they, they don't look exactly the same, but it's close enough. So now we're going to go back and read the question. Rose found 16. So that means her tape right here, and I'll do it in red, is 16. Now it says Lee found six fewer seashells than Rose. So that means Lee's tape diagram has to be smaller. So I'm going to cross off some. It doesn't matter exactly how much of the tape. But we know that that part that I crossed off is equal to six. So the question is, how many seashells did Lee find? So that means we're asking about this section right there. So what is that? Well, it's 16 minus 6. Or we could say blank plus 6 is equal to 16. In either case, we know that the answer is 10. And that wraps up another hard one, using those word problems, using tape diagrams to solve those word problems. That happened to be Module 1, uh, no, First Grade Module 6, Lesson 2.